Well, welcome back again. Hey, I found some more uh, home movies uh, Malcolm and I made, uh, blowing stuff up, some of our models. And, uh, uh, boy, we, we had a lot of fun making models, but it, we, I think we might have even had more fun blowing them up. That was uh, uh, the poor uh, Mayflower getting uh, blown <laughs> up on Thanksgiving Day in a tub of water. Uh, just seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, here's my, my pet lizard. Uh, he was a Chuck Walla lizard. Uh, I called him Chuck. And we even included our reptiles in our movie making, kind of a Godzilla kind of a thing. Here you see him. Oop, there we go. Blew up that plane. Uh, you know, I was also remem uh, remembered about uh, the time when Malcolm and I launched our little pet mouse into space. I'd mentioned it in the last video, and I thought I would share that with you really quickly. Uh, Malcolm and I, in addition to making boat models, tank models, whatever, we love to build rockets as well. Anything we could make fly. And we use uh, Jet X or Jet X engines to start with, but then we found uh, solid fuel rockets from from Estes, and some of them were quite powerful. So we designed a, a rocket much like a Saturn V. It was a very large uh, rocket. It was about four feet tall, about three inch diameter base, and then it had a, a second stage. It went down a little bit, and then it had a nose cone on the top. Uh, it, it looked just like the Saturn V rocket. Well, in the top and the nose cone, it was designed uh, at the very end before it made its apex. It would uh, get blown off, a charge would go off, and the capsule would detach from the rest of the rocket. And it had a parachute, and it would come down safely to Earth. Well, that was the plan. So we got the rocket all set up in a little vacant lot next to the house. We had electronic ignition with a little switch, and we all stood back about 20 feet from the rocket. We hit the switch after the countdown, and boy, those flames and smoke started coming out. It looked like a real launch of a Saturn V, like we were watching in a... Oh, there's a little blast right there. Uh, the thing took off nice and slow, a whole bunch of smoke. It was amazing. And as it, as it went higher and higher, we were waiting for the second stage to kick off, and, and it did, and it got even higher. It went pretty high. I'm not sure. It probably was only 500 to 1,000 feet. But as it got to the very top, we, could, we watched it. And this was about the time when the nose cone should blow off and, and come detach. And it dinned. It started to turn kind of uh, a little sideways. And then it pointed straight down to the earth and just kept accelerating straight down towards the ground. Still attached to the rocket. So Malcolm and I were a little panicked at this point because we figured for sure uh, when that thing hit the ground, our poor little mouse, I think we named him Henry, uh, wouldn't have survived. So we watched in awe as this thing came down. It just kind of augured right into the, the freshly tilled vacant lot. And I think that's probably what saved him was the fact that it was loose soil. Now, my physics students, I would explain to them in, with the concept of impulse how that saved his life. But I'll... I'll, I'll save you from that. Um, so we ran over to the rocket as soon as it hit the ground. Uh, we're positive thinkers. Maybe he survived. I don't know. So we ran over and we carefully got the nose cone. We pried the door open. We looked inside and there's little Henry looking out at us. We quickly kind of got him out of the cockpit and put him in our hand. And he was, he was a little wobbly to say the least. Uh, I don't know how many G's of force he he took when he hit the ground, but it was substantial. And we pet him and, and uh, made sure he was okay. He seemed, he seemed fine. Well, Malcolm and I felt so guilty about putting him through this experience that we thought he deserves to be set free and uh, live out the rest of his life in freedom. So Malcolm and I said our goodbyes to little Henry and we, we lowered him down to the ground in the palm of our hand and Wave goodbye to him. He started to take off, and I swear at some point he turned around and looked at us like to say goodbye, and then he ran off towards the bushes. Well, unfortunately, I guess it's when, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go because out of nowhere came this hawk flying down. He grabbed little Henry and took off with him before we could do anything, and Malcolm and I looked at each other, and uh, it, was, yeah, it, was, it was kind of... Uh, well, anticlimactic, but it was pretty sad. Um, but that was the, uh, the little mouse that roared. Um, now here, I just was looking at this one right here. It's a picture of a Stuka, um, World War II aircraft. And, uh, you know, we, we, we've included anything and everything in our videos here. And there's the, 
there is the uh, little flamethrower. And uh, Carter, for, this one's for you. Uh, it's uh, WD can, <laughs> WD-40. And I don't know how many cans of WD-40 we lit off, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, I guess that's what uh, kids do. At least that's what we did. Um, some of the models actually survived. Um, some of them didn't survive. But we really, uh, we enjoyed uh, kind of making setups. Now, this last scene, that's kind of like, uh, we, we pretended it was the Graf's Bay, and this was its last moments right here, and had a pretty dramatic explode. There it goes right there. Okay, well, thanks for watching again. I'll talk to you later. Aloha.